friends, it's me, Karen Valentine. Welcome back to my channel. So I thought that I would do something a little bit different in, um, in the color along this time. This is a, um, a page from The Beauty of Roses by Lisa Johanna. And we did, um, well, I did a flip through on it um, just a few days ago so you could see all of the, um, the beautiful uh, illustrations that are in this book. Um, and I do have the physical book, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, but if you um, are a follower of my channel, you know that I love my PDFs because I like to print on my own paper. I don't um, personally find it pleasurable to fight with paper. Not that not that the paper in this book is um, is hard to work on. It's just I would rather work on paper that I know and love and know that I can thoroughly enjoy my coloring on it. And so PDFs work really well for me. And so that is what I um, started on with this page. Um, I started this by just kind of wanting to test out my colors. And I thought, you know what, this is, there's a lot of flowers going on on this page. And um, so I just thought instead of coloring the whole page over, um, you know, probably three videos, we would just um, just do one video and um, and do it this way. So what I did was I did write down the colors um, that I'm going to be using. This one, um, with the exception of one um, luminance pencil, was done entirely with prism colors. And this one was done entirely with luminance. Um, no, I take that back. It was done with luminance and Pablo because um, I was originally going to do this in luminance, but they are sorely lacking in pinks. <laughs> like, like really, really badly. There are no good pinks other than I'm going to shorten it and call it the anthro pink. Um, other than that one, there's there's not a lot of great pinks and from what what I understand they're even going to discontinue that one which is a terrible terrible shame um, I, I don't know for sure that that's right but that's what I'd heard so anyway these two um, color combos are are fairly similar um, so um, I think what I'll do oh and I know what I wanted to show you else so wanted to show you and I apologize because when I put the white paper on here, I'm pretty sure it's going to change the color um, of this one. It's just the way my camera, what my camera likes to do, <laughs> what my camera likes to do. So I wanted to show you what these color um, combos, these color, let's see if I do it this way, if that helps. Maybe not. Um, this was done in the same exact pencils as this. And so you get um, you'll get very similar work, even though I'm working on tan cardstock, you'll get very similar work um, if you're going to work in the book or work on white paper um, if you don't want to work on the tan cardstock or don't have it or whatever. So um, have no fear that what I do, you will, if you copy what I'm doing, you will get the same results on white paper. Um, that being said, you don't necessarily have to even... Um, copy what I'm doing. I know when I did roses in the past, um, they got so overcomplicated. I was throwing down so many colors over and over and over again. It was, it was just ridiculous and it really doesn't have to be that way. So I would say that if you were to find um, some, some pinks, we'll just call it pinks, um, that you like in whatever pencil brand you want to use. You're going to want to, you're going to want a white, you're going to want a light pink, you know, a light color, a medium color, and a darker color as far as your pinks go. And then you're going to want something um, to do your, your, your depth with, your deepest parts. So in this case, I'm using henna and black raspberry. So if you can find in whatever color pencil choices you use something similar um, to these colors, 
your your flower is going to turn out beautiful no matter what and then when we come up here and work on this one um, i will show you what colors i'm using in the luminance for that one so i've i've heard a lot of people tell me that they um they don't like doing flowers they're um they're not good at it or whatever and <clears throat> i totally get it um but there are some things that you can do that will make what you put down and what you create um, better and a little more realistic um, if you do a couple of things. Um, one of those things is to put your highlight or your lightest color on the the part of the flower that is is kind of highest up. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. Um, okay, so what's happened with the way that I have the color laid down here is that the, this recedes down into the deepest depth of the flower. As it comes up, it peaks where your lightest color is and then starts to fold over. So it helps to give you that, um, that folded over look for your petal and then as each petal is kind of separated by some lights and darks it's going to wind up giving you um, the look I think that most of you are probably after when it comes to coloring your flowers or your roses so I'll just I'm going to do a couple of petals here and we'll just keep going so um, I'll start with this one because I kind of started on this one. So this is my white, and I'm just going to lay it down in that peak of the petal, the part that's sticking up the highest there. And this is um, Deco Peach, and um, I will put all the colors that I've used down there in the description box, so have no fear. or I would say your lightest pink color would go, would go here. And then this is my, my kind of medium pink color. And I'm doing that just because I wanna lay down some color before I start adding some of the darker colors in there. And they all blend together and they look really nice that way. Then I'm going to take, okay, so let me, if you don't have luminance, I want to show you what an option would be if you, if you do decide that you want to use the same exact colors. Um, there is no color in Prismacolors like this anthroquinine, quinone, I don't know, pink. Um, I tried to find one that was similar. Nothing, nothing is really similar. So that is what I used on all of the rest of this. But just for kicks, let's see what happens. So I laid down some of this blush pink. That's what I used down here. You guys will have to bear with me as I try and learn and remember to always list the colors out loud that I'm using since I'm no longer adding those to the... So we did some blush pink. And then I'm going to take some pale vermilion. And with the lightest touch... I'm going to add that right on top. And what that does is it, it I don't want to say oranges it up, but it, um, it adds a really pretty um, color to that pink that now makes it similar to this anthro pink that we were, um, that I used on the rest of the page. So... Um, to get a color that looks similar to anthro pink, you're going to use blush pink and pale vermilion. Then we're going to use some henna, and that's going to go down here in the at the base of the petal. And I also use this to do the um, shadows underneath the petals. I'm 
Boy, I'm hearing all kinds of noises coming from outside. It sounds like my hubby's got the water on and it's, it's really loud out there. I hope it's not too distracting to you guys. Okay, so in adding that henna, it, it helped to make that petal look like it was even further deep down there into the rose. So as I'm looking at this, I feel like I want some more blush pink out here. I think that just felt a little bit too, the other one felt a little bit too light to me. A little bit of that and then I took and I know this pencil is really short but I took some jasmine I'm gonna try, <laughs> try to do this without and just added it with a very light touch you don't want to really be able to see any pencil strokes you just want to bring a little bit of that that yellow tone in because it makes it look, in my mind, a lot prettier and a lot um, more interesting. Cool. Well, we're we're almost done, so I think we will finish this one and then we'll go up to the to the um, luminance. So again, I'm going to take my white and I'm just going to put it on this part right here. And it's actually really easy to tell um, in this book where those um, high points are because of the way that Lisa has drawn these lines. It kind of makes it easier to see where your, where your high point on that petal would be. Okay, then we're going to do, 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 do I want to even put Deco Peach down? I'm going to put a little bit of deco peach right under the white. Then blush pink. Now, when you are um, when you're doing these flowers, if you work one petal at a time, I think it will really help. Because um, sometimes I find when there's a lot of petals, it's easy to get overwhelmed and it's easy to not know where to put your lights and darks. But if you do one petal at a time and kind of break it down, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so I am going to go ahead, instead of using the um, Anthro Pink, I'm going to save that for up here, and I am going to go ahead and use the Pale Vermilion, since it's turned out to be so close. But gosh, I really, really love what the combination of the blush pink and the pale vermilion do. It gives it a, it's like I can see, I can see yellow in here. I can see pink and orange. It's really a pretty color. By the way, if you, any of you guys are out, out there are familiar with the, um, I don't know if it would, if you'd call it the cl closed captioning or, or the subtitles um, on videos, would you... Um, Drop me a message on Instagram or 
Facebook so that I can chat with you. I had a um, I had a gal contact me who's in I think she's in France, and she um, she asked me if I could put the closed captioning back on my videos that it wasn't on the two tiger videos. And I was at a complete loss because I'd never put closed captioning um, or subtitles on any of my videos. And I never took it off of any of my videos. <laughs> and so I didn't know what to tell her because it wasn't something that I actually, to my knowledge that I had done, this is blush pink again. Um, and I, I, yeah, so I was at a loss. I'm like, I didn't do it on purpose. I don't know how to fix it. Um, so, and because I, um, I'm i not in an, another country, um, I can't tell, I can't tell if they're showing up or not showing up. <laughs> anyway, I felt at a complete loss. This is Henna again, but actually, so if you're familiar with closed captioning or the subtitles on the videos or what I should do, I would love if you would contact me and let me know how to fix that. Okay, so now I'm going to take some black raspberry and I'm gonna put that in the, the place where I want it to be darkest. some of that in here too. All right, let me see if I want to do any blending on this. I could blend with a, another color. dark enough yeah I think it is and then we have just that left to do and then we'll move on to the luminance up here so I think I'm debating on I think I'm gonna use the deco peach although it almost doesn't show up very well on this paper it'll show up it would show up a lot better on um, white paper. This is the blush pink. And then this is henna. And basically the henna on these are just kind of acting as shadow. And it it just really helps to define each petal so that each petal shows up. All right, did I get them all on this one? Okay, so once again for this one, we've got Deco Peach, Blush Pink, um, Pale Vermilion, Black Raspberry, a little bit of Jasmine and henna. Henna should have gone in here. <laughs> so those are the colors and white. So that's what we did for the Prismacolor Rose. Now we'll keep on going with this one. And um, I had to pull um, some pinks from the, um, the Karen Dash Pablo set. Um, to to complete the colors that I needed since Luminance is, has terrible pinks. Um, and this is a new set to me and I really wanted to like swatch it out and show you. It was a very, very generous gift from a dear friend um, who's 
who, um, Allison was the one who encouraged me to start my YouTube channel in the first place. So, um, I definitely want to say thank you to her for sending me these. And in another video very soon, I will, um, swatch those out and show you that new set because they are, um, lovely, lovely pencils. Okay, so if you don't have Pablo's um, and you have Prismas, you can absolutely pull, you know, your Deco Peach and your um, Blush Pink from um, Prismacolors. Or if you if you don't have Prismas or Pablo's, just pick um, just pick a light pink and a and a medium pink and throw it in there, and it, it'll be fine. I'm sure. I'm sure it will be fine. Okay, so let's get going. What am I missing here? Ah, oh, yes, I'm missing white. Instead of white, I'm going to use buff titanium. Um, now, if you are, I'm going to take this off. If you're working on white paper or you're working in your book, um, when you, you you're, you're not going to really be able to lay your white down first because um, you won't really be able to see it unless you use buff titanium and then you might be able to. Um, and you guys probably already know this. I don't even know why I'm telling you this, but just when you do it, um, especially on your, on your tips, on the very high parts and on the areas where you want that, that lightest, whitest highlight, um, just make sure that you leave some white space in there and throw your pinks down and then go ahead and blend with your white and I think you'll be you'll be good to go. I think you'll be pretty happy with with how that looks in the end. So um, uh, is there anything here left to do? Not really. So I'm just going to kind of keep on going with this one and then we will do this one or maybe we should just dive right into that one. Um, I don't know, I have a really hard time leaving things unfinished, so this is Buff Titanium. This is Pablo Salmon Rose. These pencils, these pencils are really lovely, these Pablos. Really, really nice pencils. So actually, I might go ahead because these are three, because these are really skinny and small, I'm gonna go ahead and just do them all. So this is the buff titanium. And let's see, let's do this one too. Am I in screen? No, you're not. Okay, Salmon Rose, Pablo's, or Prismacolor Blush Pink. <clears throat> when I write these down there in the description box, I'll go ahead and put the um, equivalents as best I can um, in there too, so that you can pick and choose which colors you want to use because they're all interchangeable. I like using all my pencils together on a page. It works just fine. Even my um, polychromos work well with my Prisma colors. So don't be afraid to mix pencils. Okay, this is um, Anthro Pink. I'm shortening the name because I'm not going to stumble over that name every time I say it. <laughs> We're going to put that in there. All right, then we're going to use P 
Pyroline Brown, which is number 585. And if you don't have Pyroline Brown, you can use Henna. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether a petal is folded away from you or folded towards you. <laughs> so I just do my best and sometimes I don't get it right. But I don't think it really matters after you get them all done. You'll never really be able to tell the difference. Okay, so in this case, this is a good example of, is it folded over this way or is it folded in on itself? This one we did like it was folded away. This probably is folded away as well. So since I have this Pyroline Brown in my hand, I'm just going to go ahead and do the dark parts first. This is the same petal, but we'll, we'll do that one in a minute. Uh, salmon Rose, Pablo's. to yeah we'll work our way up here okay so this petal here is definitely this is folded over this way so I'm gonna throw some buff titanium down on that one and I think I'll go straight for anthro pink here Caroline Brown. I'm also going to put that right underneath there because this would cast a shadow. This would cast a shadow underneath. We can always come in and darken that later if we if. Uh, we need to now if you have the new portrait set from um, the luminance they have a pink white which you could also use um, instead of this buff titanium which would probably be absolutely lovely I am not using it because not everybody has that extra set in their stash yet so either one would work pyroline brown i don't even know if i'm pronouncing that right pyroline yeah i think it's pyr pyroline brown It's amazing to me as you add the darks um, how much more three-dimensional the petals get. Okay, 
I'm going to put dark right in here, this purely brown. Back to buff titanium. And just see like a whole series of these um, colored and framed um, all together like I think just it would be really really beautiful if I had any room left in my um, my art studio to hang more pictures on the wall I would do that <laughs> I don't. I'm getting very, very close to doing the filming of the um, art studio for you guys so you can see my room. It's so nice to have it back. I moved out of it for a little while. I think you saw the video um, where I showed you my coloring corner in my family room. And that was, that was out of necessity because when I was working, my, my art studio was always full of sewing projects and other non-coloring related projects, Salmon Rose and Pablo's. Um, and it made it really hard to I would have to put all that stuff away in order to break out my coloring stuff and, and then bring it all back out again when I needed to work on it for, for work. But now that I am quote unquote retired from working, I got to, I got to bring my studio back. So I was very excited about that. It's my happy place. Buff titanium. Salmon rose in Pablo's or blush pink in Prismas. Put some of that anthro pink in there. Caroline Brown. And I think I'll just kind of do some blending with the buff titanium. Okay, let's break out this um, Indian yellow. Now, this is a color that I'm having second thoughts on right now because I'm thinking that this is one of those new colors. So, if you don't have Indian yellow in luminance, you can use jasmine in Prismacolors um, or any kind of, you want a yellow that's not too, too bright. And we're gonna use a very light, touch again because we just want a hint of yellow on these petals. So if you have to hold your um, pencil way back. That's good. Speaking of pencils, <laughs> I was doing my nails today and I was looking at my hand and I went, holy moly, what is that giant callus on my finger? It's not on, it's not on this finger. It's only on that finger. Hmm, I wonder why. So when I first started coloring, I wore those little sweater finger sleeves because my, my fingers would hurt. And I stopped wearing them, and now I'm thinking that I need to start wearing those again because, oh my gosh, if that thing continues to grow, I'll look like I have a, <laughs> I 
a deformed growth on my finger. So if you see me wearing those uh, sweater sleeve thingies on my finger, you'll know why. Okay, so I'm looking at this petal, which I did before we got on camera, and I don't think that there's enough pink on there, so I'm gonna use the salmon pink and add a little bit more color on there. Again, if you are using white paper, your light colors like this, um, this granite rose, this granite rose shows up quite um, very light and white. Actually, just doing a little, I'm just doing a little test here. I wanna see. It actually almost shows up better than this um, Deco Peach from Prismacolor. Anyway, so this is um, Granite Rose. And it will probably show up better on white paper. But that's not, that's, that's not too shabby, that's pretty good. Okay, so I, was, I picked out the two spots that are folded over and are going to be the brightest. This, even though it's kind of hiding, I still think I'm going to do it in the same way because it's the back side of the petal folding up. And the same with this one, too. Okay, so now I'm going to use Salmon Rose. Mm, nope, I take that back. Now I'm going to use the Luminance Buff Titanium. I'm just going to get some light. Just there. Now Pablo Salmon Pink. I think I want a little bit of white or lighter color just right there. That looks right. And let's go ahead and do this too. Luminance Anthro Pink. Caroline Brown. Now I'm going to do this bit right here. Dark. I'm going to do this bit right here, dark. Okay, and then this part right here. Now we're doing the kind of shadow from this petal. Okay, 
then we need a little bit of this right here. And then down in here. Salmon pink. Use that to blend this a little bit. So I will post this picture once it's finished. I'll post it on my. Um, well, I always post it on my Instagram, but Instagram's a little hard for um, for really getting in there and seeing pictures because they don't let you. They don't let you blow them up very big which is kind of frustrating sometimes. Um, so I will post it on my um, Facebook um, my Facebook page, which is um, Coloring Art by Karen Valentine. If you guys want to um, take that photo and however you want to do it, if you want to save it to your you know computer or you want to um, just pull it up and blow it up, Feel free to pull it up, blow it up, and use it as a guide to, to help you with um, your color placement. Not that I am, you know, perfect and know exactly what I'm doing, but sometimes um, when you have one to um, emulate, <laughs> um, it you learn. You learn by by putting pencil to paper. And even if you're copying somebody else, as you are putting that pencil to paper, you are you are learning, you are absorbing um, where to put those, those colors. And when you do it, and then you look at your page and it makes sense and you go, oh, that looks like a rose. That, I see the depth and I see the highlights. Then when you go to do it yourself on another page, it's in your brain and you're like, okay, I got this. I can do this because I know you can. I know you can. So this is um, Indian yellow. Just a tiny little bit. And I think, what did I do? This is the anthro pink. I think we'll do a little bit of that under here. Oh, I know what I would what I'll show you before I start doing this one. So, I took a um, white Posca pen. You could also use a skinny skinny brush and acrylic paint, which I've been loving to do. Um, that works fabulously too. But sometimes you want um, you want that black line to disappear, um, especially if you want something to be you know nice and highlighted. And you can take your Posca, your little skinny one, and come over. That wasn't a very good job of doing that. And just come over and really lightly go over your black lines on some of these, um, because really you know they wouldn't. They wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a black line on on that petal, you know. If, if, if nothing else, it would be white because it's the tip of the flower and it's catching the light. So. Don't be afraid to do that. Sometimes it works better with a skinny brush and and acrylic paint, but and then you can just soften that, soften anything that you need to with your finger.
but I think it makes a big difference in how um, in how the finished flower looks. Mm, sometimes I can't tell where the little white needs to go. I'm also seeing a petal there that looks like I totally forgot to do it. So this is salmon pink. Uh, I can't quite tell if that's, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm going to put some white there anyway. <laughs> All right, so that's what I did over here. I took my, I took my um, pen. Come on now, don't. And I went over some of those lines and I, really like the way that looks. All right. So there's two of them. So that one was done with mostly luminance um, and Pablo's. And this one was done with Prismas. So what should we do here? I like, here's another thing that I like. I like when you use different brands of pencils on the same page, especially when you're doing, um, for example, these are three of the same kind of rows. But what happens is in using the two different brands of pencils, you get roses that look similar, like they belonged on the same bush, um, but different enough that they're two entirely different flowers, you know, two, um, so it's not the same exact colors on this, on each rose three times, which I really like. Very much I like that. All right, well, I will say that I'm really enjoying, I'm really kind of enjoying the um, luminance, but I feel like I want more of these colors up here now so that we don't have two that this of the same color side by side. So I think I'm gonna go back to Prismas. I know, big surprise, right? <laughs> All right, and on this one, um, I did mostly use the Caran the Caran Dash um, Anthro Pink. So I think for this one, kind of like I did for you here on camera, um, I'm gonna use the pale, the combination of the blush pink and the pale vermilion instead. Having a hard time talking today. All right, I think I need to do a little bit of some sharpening here. I have to put my pencil sharpener on the floor so that it's not, so it's not super, super loud in your ear when I sharpen. All right, let's do this one too. All right, I have no idea how long we're going, but I think we might just go through the whole thing. We'll see. All right, so I'm gonna start with my white. Make sure I'm in camera. Am I zoomed in? I'm gonna zoom in some more. Okay, so I'm going to put the white on the petals that are folded over and the petals that are going to most likely have the most light, kind of like I have um, this being quite light. I'm going to do that same thing for these here. Um, I'm going to start by just putting some white on these folded over bits. This one's folded in. This one is folded out. Sometimes it's hard to tell. This one's folded over. Okay, so I'm going to put some white.
If you're doing this on white paper, you don't need to do this part. Just make sure that you leave some white in the center of the petals. I'm just going to go ahead, since I've got it in my hand, I'll do this, bit, this part. I know I said work one petal at a time. We, we, we will, <laughs> I think, for the most part. Sometimes it's easier to work a couple at a time. But I'll show you something else that is kind of a help to me, at least, um, before we start doing the petals. Um, it helps to it helps me to define what's what so I'm going to take my henna and in the areas that I know are going to be really dark I'm just going to go ahead and add that in because that is the inside of a petal and of course, I got carried away. Okay, so that's going to be dark. Um, this is going to be dark. This is going to be dark. There's going to be other dark bits, but I know that these are. I'm not sure what's going on there, but we're going to make that dark. I'm going to make that dark. Okay. So. Where do I want to start? <laughs> I guess I'll start over here. So this is um, blush pink. I know I always change my mind on you when I say, do one petal at a time, and then I don't. <laughs> But I kind of know what's going, what's happening with these petals right here. So okay, that one should have some white on it. And then we'll add this pink. Let's do uh, Pale Vermilion. Again, really, really lightly. In fact, I almost don't think I have enough um, pink down yet. I feel like I've got some that's not. I'm gonna use this Deco Peach. Gosh darn it, it really doesn't show up very well on this paper. <laughs> the Pablo showed up better. So, never mind. We're going back to the blush pink. But you have to get a pretty decent layer down before you add the pale vermilion. Because you don't want an orange rose. You want a pink rose with with uh, orangey. <laughs> I can't think of the word. Hints of like peach. Uh, 
sorry. I should probably readjust the camera because the paper is poking me. In fact, I think I will. Let's just see what happens if I push. That's better. <laughs> Some of this is going to go under here, tight up against it. And white. This white blends so pretty on this paper. I think I'm going to wait and add the, um, the yellow tones till the end. So let's put some white here. Blush pink. Pale vermilion. And then back to the henna, we'll fill this in a little bit more. And I think black raspberry. Black raspberry will be our darkest. Um, I probably don't need any here. My, although it really does, it really does add a lot more depth. So, and you don't have to use it all the way across. Um, you don't have to use it all the way across. If you just use it in a section. And it helps to make the flower look more, I know I keep using the word three-dimensional, I know, but it just kind of helps to show that that part of the petal is um, kind of pushing further away and deeper than this part of the petal. Does that make any sense at all? I don't know. Um... Okay, I have this petal done like it's, like this is the center and this is the, the fold. Because that's what it looks like to me. But, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just don't know. You just got to do something. <laughs> so I will go ahead and put pink, a uh, blush pink in there. And I think henna. I don't know why. 
more blush pink to blend. That's fine. It's oops, it's all gonna it's all gonna blend in and and look right in the end anyway. As long as you have lots of highs and lows, you'd be fine. Okay. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to work on areas where I know <laughs> what I'm doing. And then you tackle the areas that you're not sure about. Because sometimes then it all comes together and you're like, oh yeah, that makes more sense now. So this is actually going to be dark. So I'll put a little bit of pale vermilion in here. Probably not necessary. And then henna. almost looks to me like some of these petals are flipped the wrong way, but that's just probably my, I guess that's just the way my eye sees it. I don't know. If you see it differently, by all means, color it differently. I don't know that that's right, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is um, black raspberry. Yeah, that might be too much dark right there, but. Okay, let's go back to these. Blush pink. Let's add some pale vermilion to these. Blush pink. Pale vermilion. Henna. pink pale vermilion some henna down here too. I think I might use the deco peach to blend.
Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure, but I'm going to go ahead and just do that dark. Even though that looks like it might have been two different things. Blush pink. Pale Vermilion. Chestnut. Not chestnut, sorry. Henna. I think I like the way it's turning out. Sometimes it's hard to tell until you get most, like three quarters of it done and then you start to see. Blush pink. Pale Vermilion. I think we'll leave that for now. Just for now. It's a guessing game. Okay. Blush pink. I'm going to skip the pale vermilion and go straight for the henna. This is the inside, I think, of this petal. So, I want it to be nice and dark inside and maybe a little bit brighter on the outside up here where the light would hit it. I used deco peach on that, but probably white would be better. Yeah, boy, just what a difference. Okay, henna.
think this is where I might want to use some black raspberry. always come in with this again later too after we get most of the stuff done and um, that will help okay I'm confused about this stuff so I'm going to ignore it <laughs> for a few minutes um, yeah this is easy so let's do that that will be blush pink. Blush pink. Blush pink. Pale vermilion. This looks like I got too much pale vermilion on that, so I'm going to throw a little bit more blush pink down on top of that. And henna. white to blend. Okay, this is folded over, this is folded over, this is folded over. I'm not sure what's... I'm going to do that in pink. Blush pink. And... Well, these are going to be pink too, but since they have the white underneath, they won't be as they won't be as bright. And then close to the fold over is where the shadow will go. Just to be That's where we're at so far. I want to ponder this a little bit and examine this a little bit so I don't make a mistake. While I do that, I'm going to go get something to drink. <laughs> Got to do something right there. So that with the henna. Yep. Okay. All right, I will be right back. Okay. So I think 
we're good. I'm just going to keep going. And um, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. <laughs> we'll just keep. in my hand. Let's get just a little bit. Let's get some white up here. We'll probably wind up doing the roses in one video and the leaves and background maybe in another video. I was hoping I could get it all done in one but I don't think so. All right, I am going to do, let's see, these. I don't know why, but I'm going to put the white at the kind of the top of those. And I have no idea what that should be. So when in doubt, Color it pink. <laughs> All right. Pale vermilion, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Henna. Blend some more pink, blush pink. blush pink. Okay. And this will be pink. black raspberry right now. Pale vermilion. Just a little bit. And henna. Pink on this there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Pale 
pale vermilion. I've got to turn this. This is driving me crazy. Sorry. I'd like to try, if I can, to have my pencil strokes going the direction that Petal is going in this case. She says as she starts going the opposite direction. Blend this with the blush pink. Okay, more blush pink. Pale vermilion, and as I'm looking at this petal right here, I feel like I want a teeny bit more on this one. Okay. Henna. Blush pink. And black raspberry. Blush pink.
Hemen. All right, let's do some black raspberry in some of these really dark areas. And even if it's just the tiniest little point, it makes a difference. Get some henna right there. Blush pink. Okay, I'm going to stick this little jasmine pencil in an extender because it's so short. All right, jasmine. I'm using a really light I guess I should rephrase that because I'm not doing it as light as some things that I've done. So I guess what I want to say, what I mean to say is you just want a hint of the jasmine on here. So adjust your pressure accordingly. All right, let's put some white um, Posca on some of these petals. And then you can kind of see the difference between with and without, and then you can decide whether you want to do it or not. I need to get just a little piece of scrap paper because my pen looks a little juicy and I don't want to. Okay, so this is gonna go Part of me wonders if I should do this with, you know, I am. I think I'm gonna try and do this without Posca. Let's, let's try and do this with our fine line brush and some paint. What you think? All right.
right. Just a couple drops of water because I want it to be fluid, but not, I still want there to be pigment in there. All right, let's try this. <laughs> Come on now. Probably would have been easier with the Posca. So, use Posca or use a paintbrush, whichever you want. I don't know what I'm doing. Is it the brush? The brush does have a little thingy in it. Let's see if that helped. You definitely have more um, control over the thickness of the lines when you use a fine line brush. Posca, you're pretty much going to get the same size line wherever you... And what I found with the acrylic paint is if you mess up, it's it's easier to rub off than the Posca. And it feels like I can put um, pencil over the acrylic paint better than the Posca too. hard time controlling today my thickness really so maybe I should break out the Posca instead maybe it's because I'm not dragging it does seem to work best when you drag rather than Go side to side. That could be. Where was I? There. Yep, I'm feeling like I want to go back to the Posca again. For some reason, I am having a hard time today with this. days are just not
there's a way to soften it a little bit. Yeah, I actually kind of like it softened. So this is the um, Deco Peach. I like I like it. I like the the um the white on here. But it kind of needs to be broken up a little bit, I think. Yeah. I like that. So, just a couple more. could do it on these outer ones, but I don't know what we're going to do on the background yet, so, but it looks funny, so I am going to do them. It looks funny having them be black outlined and everything else not. Deco pink just it just pulls it back just enough so that it's not bright white, which I like. And there's one more, which I could probably wait to do, but I think I'm gonna do this on all of them because I like I really like the way it um it looks. So I will probably off camera finish that up on all of these. All right. So there we go. There's our, there's our roses. I like the way they turned out and I like the, um, I like the white. So I will do that and then I'll take a picture of it. That'll show up on the end of the video after I've done the white on everything. And, um, and we'll do the leaves on the next video. All right. Well, I have no idea how long this video was, but um, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, and... Um, and that is that. So until I see you guys again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and happy coloring. Bye. Hey guys, you thought we were done. <laughs> no. So I did want to show you this because I'm re it's really cool and I'm really happy with um, what's going on here. So I did go through and I used the Posca pen on um, on the lines, and I I was I'm really happy with the way uh, with what that did, um, except that the line that it left even after I added the pink, um, you know, when you're looking at it from far away, it's it's one thing, but when you were look when I was looking at it up really really close it was bothering me. It wasn't seamless. It looked like an afterthought. There was something about it that I didn't like. So all of a sudden in my brain, a little light bulb went off. Ding! And I thought, oh my gosh, pull out your Holbein soft white pencil. 
Um, last year I bought several of these because I tried them once and I was like, oh my God, I need these. And so before they were at Dick Blick, um, here in the States, you could only get them at um, in England and I ordered mine from Jackson's Art Supply. And then I forgot about them um, and I haven't been using them. And so what I have been doing um, off camera, which I wanted to just make sure that I showed you, was I've been using this Holbein Soft White to um, kind of cover up and soften the lines that I put on there from the Posca pen. And honestly, I I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if um, you could only use the Soft White and not even put Posca down, and it would cover up. Um, the dark lines or at least cover them up enough to where you know you would be happy um, so that is what I have been doing and I'm like oh my gosh I should probably you know like at least show everybody what I'm doing with this soft white pencil so not only is it um, is it smoothing those those lines um, it adds the most wonderful bright white highlights um, in, an, in, an, in, in any area that it, I, um, I didn't get it white enough with the Prisma. Now, the only thing about the whole bean pencil, um, and you can buy them open stock, if, and if you don't want to, you know, invest in a whole set of whole beans, because Lord knows they're not cheap. Um, don't, don't plan on using this pencil and then being able to um, put pencil over the top of it because it's not happening. You Once you use this pencil, um, that's it as far as um, pencils go. That's going to be your very ultimate last layer because it's so, so um, waxy. I guess waxy is the right word for what it is. Um, that um, other color pencils just do not even like to go on top. I mean, you could force them, you could make it happen if you really, really needed to, but for the most part, um, it's your final stage. But what I'm what I'm liking of what is happening here is that it is it's covering up those those dark lines and covering up the um, uh, the shaky I don't know how to exp I don't I'm okay here maybe here's some some that I could show you so let me zoom in really zoom in okay so um, for example you can see here that it's quite you know that that line is quite um, obvious and so I'm just going to go over it with my soft white. And yes, it does add more whites into the piece. Um, but I don't, I don't mind that at all. I, um, I kind of like it. So here's one. Let's just try and see. Here's one that um, I did not get the Posca on. So let's see what happens if I try and cover up that white line. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. And even if it's not, um, you know, completely, completely covered, just having it be that much lighter, I think makes all the difference in the world. Um, now these are even softer than Prismas, so be aware that they you're not going to get a sharp line that's going to stay for a long time. And they can be tricky with sharpening. Um, but. I really. I'm really glad that I pulled that out. Here, here's another one I'll show you. So it just, you know, that white line just even though I covered it with some um, some pink, there's just something about it that it just looks too harsh. And 
I don't mind the um, I don't mind the extra bright white. I kind of like it. So that is what I've been doing on this. So I just didn't want to post it and show you the picture of it and have you go, well, wait a minute, that's not, oh gosh, I don't even know how much out of focus or out of camera I was on that, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's what I did with this. I pulled out my, um, my whole bean white and it is really doing some fun things to this that I, I like, I like a lot. So yeah, I'm kind of excited about finishing this one up. This looks like it needs a little bit of more shadow. This is what I do. This is, I keep re, I keep working it and working it until off, off camera. It's like, oh dang, I should have done that on camera. Anyway. I'll stop now. So that was it. I just wanted to let you know what that last um, little product was that I used on this. So that is all. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.